So, all right, let's change pace a little bit. Let's talk about let's let's talk about the episode. Let's talk about uh, episode one, or no, season one, episode four. Let's get to scooping, which you yes. won. Uh, the NAACP Image Award for Writing. Yes. Uh, and the final scene yes. has gone viral, sparked conversations. People were, uh, people were touched, affected yes. by that scene. And if you haven't seen it, you've heard of it. And it's the scene, yep, when yes. all the makeup comes all off, the, the eyelashes off. come off, the wig comes off. And then she's she getting ready. And then she confronts her husband mm -hmm. and says, Why is your penis on a dead girl's phone? <laughs> and she's like this. When she does it. Tell me about that. <laughs> um, it started out as something Viola wanted to do. So Viola came in before we even started the series, before I was even a part of the show, besides, it was just Pete and his, you know, his ideas and Viola and her ideas. And uh, they decided that she is a woman that wears a wig. Um, if you're in law professions or other sort of professional avenues, sometimes you don't wanna have to deal with the questions about your hair. Hey. <laughs> and so you make the decision to wear a wig and that becomes your suit of armor. So she said, if I am a real woman, a whole character, I am not wearing my wig at home. That doesn't happen. Uh, whether you are a, um, a Hasid, Hasid and Jew, uh, and you have to cover, if you have to wear a burnous or whatever, when you get home, you take all that stuff off. You don't wear that crap around the house. Uh, so she was like, if we're gonna be at home with Annalise, then we need to see all of Annalise. And we decided that it would make a really important story point if we saw her take off that wig. Because I can remember getting tweets, that wig is terrible. That ain't her hair. I hate her wig. Why did you make that choice for her wig? As a black woman, you should understand that she should have a better grade of wig if she's that kind of a defense attorney. I don't understand why. You know, it became this whole thing with all of my friends. And I couldn't say anything. And I was like, all right, all right, just keep talking. Just keep yapping out your damn mouth. Because something was coming. And we decided to hang a lantern on it. So when she took off that outer layer of armor that she goes to work with on a daily basis, where she took off the wig, where she took off her eyelashes, I thought she was going to take her face off. You know, I, I was like, man, she's going for it. We wanted to make it so that she was taking off the outside armor so that she can gear up for war in her house. So she was taking off one armor that everyone else has to deal with and she was putting on her own armor. Uh, Viola Davis is an actor's actor and she said, if I'm taking the makeup off, I'm taking it all off. And so we were like, okay, if you're gonna take it all off, are you, are you sure? Because there's a standard in Hollywood, if you are a woman, that even with your makeup off, you still have to look like you've got makeup on unless you're young and dewy, right? And even if you're young and dewy, they'll still put a little brush on you just to make sure you don't shine, right? So she was like, I'm taking it all off. And we only had one take to do it because it takes 45 minutes to put it all on, right? And so we did it in stages. The director of that particular episode was female. And um, so we were able to take the, the, the wig off. I think it came off this way. So the wig came off and we were able to do that a couple of times. And then when she took it off, she took it all off, just all off. And you could hear a pin drop on that set when that scene was happening, you know, grips with the butt crack and everything. Everybody knew that it was a very important scene that they were seeing because you just don't see that on television that often. And I, I, was, I was just privileged to sit there and be along for the ride for that. And you mentioned, so the director was female. And yes. in this case, the lead writer, you. The lead writer and the produced. first assistant director was female. And I believe we had a, a female camera operator. So yes, chicks, we were, we were in the building in full force with Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam. So it was like a lot of 
That was for all, the, the over 40 reference, it's fine. <laughs> and bow-legged Lou, There's, uh, the rest of y'all were zygotes, it's fine. But, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was just a really great moment. It was just a really great moment to be a part of and, to, and I just felt you know, great that it was in my episode because it could have just as easily gone somewhere else and we decided that it was a much stronger play in that particular episode. Uh, and just a side note, um, especially when I was talking about it with my class, my students brought up the explicit point that that was a transition so that now we can see her with her wig off mm -hmm. in intimate settings. I think the only student who sees her with her, her wig off is Wes, right? right? So again, the, this unarmored armor is, you know, a moment of intimacy mm -hmm. uh, reserved for special people in her yes. life. And we get a glimpse into that as the television audience and mm -hmm. see things that other characters don't get to see. Right. And I think that that's particularly unique uh, and an opportunity that you may not have gotten with a uh, majority male mm -hmm. production staff. Right. I mean, and the students actually did get to see it when um, they were first covering up the murder. So that episode, episode nine of the first season, when she comes downstairs after a night of telling Wes how to get away with murder, and they don't realize that she has told Wes how to get away with murder, is the first time that the students ever see her without her wig. And they are all like, what is, uh, uh. <laughs> what's happening here? Oh, oh my God, oh, oh my God. Because they don't realize that she's in on it, and she has exchanges a look with Wes, and at the end of that, that season, I mean, it, it, at the end of that winter finale, when we go out of that winter finale, it's like, oh my God, you know, she has actually become the person who opens up and is a little more intimate now with Wes and uh, later on with the students.